Hello, everyone. I think we're live. Yes. Yes, we are live. Um, welcome to another episode of The Healthy Menu brought to you by Menu Sano. And I'm your host, Sonia. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about technology to help you take control of your life. Um, if you want to stay ahead of the curve with your body these days, um, then you need to understand how it works and how your lifestyle influences the risk for illness. Uh, it's the future of medicine and it's called preventative health. Uh, doctors know that pre prevention is the best cure, especially since many common chronic diseases that affect the population can't be cured and only managed with conventional medicine. Um, gone are the days when cell phones were used only to make phone calls. We now have smartphones that have given us um, accessibility to so many different tools and apps and things that exist to help us. And so your iPhone now has a lot of um, built-in activity trackers, and you can also use uh, health apps to input several kinds of uh, personal health data. For example, you can use your iPhone to track your weight, your blood pressure, your heart rate, uh, your test results, and a lot more. Uh, so today, I want to talk about some of the apps that are available through smartphones, whether it be an iPhone, an Android, a Google phone, things like that. And then some of my personal favorite tools, uh, since I am a techie and I love technology, of course, I apply it in my own life. And I do have some favorite tools that I use on a regular basis. And uh, this show is not sponsored by any of these tools. These are my own personal uh, favorites that I, that I use on an you know, on everyday basis. So, of course, the smartphone um, has helped us get access to a lot of these different tools. So the ones that I'm going to talk about today, uh, majority of them have an app that goes along with the device. So, of course, let's start with uh, I'm an iPhone user, my handy iPhone. And so, of course, I have an iWatch. And I love the iWatch because it, um, you know, you put it on and it's not about getting your emails or your messages on your iWatch. I personally love it for tracking my health. So I have um, an app on it that tracks my steps and I, I set guides for, you know, how many steps I want to take per day. So usually I put an average of about 10,000 uh, steps that I want to take on a daily basis and my phone vibrates and tells me where I'm at, uh, how many steps I've taken so far, and based on the steps that I've taken against my my body weight and things like that, it tells me uh, how many calories I've burned, if I'm on track, if I'm not on track, and it also um, helps me understand previous data compared to now. So I sort of know what I'm doing, if I'm being active, if I'm not being active. And it's really good because, you know, we all have those lazy days, we all have really active days. And so you can sort of go back and look at what you've been doing when you've been slacking off and how you can catch up and things like that. So I definitely recommend um, an iWatch for um, just keeping daily track of everything that you're doing, you know, you put it on, uh, all the apps automatically work and you just go. So, you know, like even you can see here, I have my, my little, well, I don't know if you can see, I have my little app, my steps app. So if I open it up, it tells me how many steps I've taken so far today. So I haven't been that active today, clearly. Uh, so if I'm going to reach my goal of 10,000 steps, I need to get outside and I need to get walking. But it's just such a great tool. And of course, it's got the, the health app that um, I, the, I, the iPhone also provides. It um, takes your, your heartbeat uh, and keeps track of that. So it's just such a great tool. And I use it on an everyday basis. And, you know, it's also it, it's good just to keep track just so you know what you're doing. So this is one of my favorites. And I use it, obviously, all the time. Uh, my next favorite tool. So, yes, I have an iWatch, and you would think that this would do everything that I want it to do. However, the thing with this is you can't sleep with it because you need to charge it every night. Uh, the battery does not last that long. You also can't shower with it. I mean, it's a, it, it's got some waterproof resistance, but it's not that great. So I never shower with it and I never sleep with it. So how do you track your sleep, right? Because that's one of the things that's really important. 
Um, sleep is an essential function that allows uh, your body and your mind to recharge. They say you, you should be getting on average seven to eight hours of sleep per night. Um, when you do, it leaves you refreshed and you wake up alert um, the next day. Healthy sleep also helps the body remain healthy and it helps prevent disease. Without enough sleep, the brain cannot function properly. And I've personally experienced this on many times, you know, and sometimes like I usually try to get my seven to eight hours of sleep per day, but I know when I haven't slept well, or sometimes I think I know, and I don't know. So how do you figure that out? Especially when you can't sleep with a device like an iWatch on. Well, this is where the wonderful aura ring comes in. Yes. A lot of people have started wearing these, and this is a wonderful tech company that I absolutely love. And this thing, I will wear it for an entire week without having to charge it. You can shower with it. You can, you know, there are different sizes that you can order. There's different colors. I got the silver, but they also have a gold, a black, and I just love it. So you just put it on, and it the minute you put it on, it starts tracking you. So obviously, of course, it has an app. Um, but the purpose of this ring is to help you track your sleep. So it tells you what time you went to bed and the quality of your sleep and then what time you woke up. Now, the quality of your sleep is the part that's most important because you can go to bed and be in bed for eight hours, but that doesn't mean that you slept for those eight hours. So it's really good to understand what your body is doing at night. Are you really sleeping? Are you in that awake sleep state? How much deep sleep are you getting every night? So I absolutely love this device. It is one of my favorites. So I'm going to show you on my handy iPhone here and I'll show you like yesterday, not today. So um, I love it because you wake up in the morning and it gives you your readiness. So uh, my readiness yesterday says, looks like you've had a nice amount. Uh, sorry, looks like you've had a nice amount of easier days lately. If you're up for it, how about leveling up your workout today? So it's encouraging me to work out and it's telling me that I had a good day. So my sleep clearly wasn't that great because 79 is good. It's not fantastic. But it's telling me that I went to bed at 1.45 a.m., which is not great. I should have gone to bed earlier. Um, but then it breaks out when I was awake. So if I go into here, it sort of tells me, you see this chart. It tells me how long, when I woke up, at what time, which is the white part here. And that's the times that I was awake. So I woke up around just a little after 6 a.m. And then I was kind of in and out. Uh, REM is, you know, when you're in that state of sort of awake and sleep. And it tells me when I was in that. And then it tells me when, when I was in light sleep, which was for two hours and 32 minutes. And I actually got deep sleep, which was two hours and 27 minutes. And deep sleep is like your average sleep per night is not eight hours of deep sleep. We usually get on average two to three hours of deep sleep. And then the rest of it is that in between light and things like that. So if I go into it a little bit deeper, it tells me my sleep efficiency, my, my resting heart rate. So the ring is measuring my heart rate as I'm sleeping, if it elevates, if it drops, and it gives you warnings as well. And then it goes through and it tells me, you know, total sleep was seven hours and two minutes. It was good. My efficiency, if it's optimal, uh, my restfulness, if it's good, bad, if it's great my deep sleep. And then it also gives me my uh, latency, you know, it's telling me to pay attention because I didn't go to bed on time. And then my timing. So I really like it because, uh, because it tracks your sleep. So you can really see the quality of sleep that you're getting every night. In addition to that, it's obviously tracking your heart rate, which works on other apps that I'm going to go through in a minute. And so it's really serves a purpose and you put it on, you forget about it, and it's just tracking all this stuff. And, you know, for people who ask, why is this so important to you? You know, these devices that I'm sort of sharing today are all about preventative health for me personally, but also, you know, I had a health scare a couple of years ago. And so I'm a little bit obsessed with wanting to stay healthy and stay fit and taking care of my body, making sure that I'm doing the right things and um, 
so that I can really, you know, not get sick again and, and have control. I don't want to be going to the doctor all the time when I want to know these types of things. So technology has really come along to the point where people can do that for themselves. You, you can have all these devices really helping you on a day-to-day -day basis, and you don't have to be making appointments to go see your family doctor as often as you used to. So I really like it for that reason. And in addition to, to that, the, the aura ring also shows you your activity goals. I mean, I use my, my, my eye watch and I have all of that there, but I also have it here. And this also tracks my steps. So if I, if I forget to wear my eye watch or if my eye watch battery died, I don't have to worry because this is still tracking all of my steps. So I don't miss anything, which is great. Um, so yeah, so you can see my steps. It gives me all my data. If I go to my home and I go back, it's, um, also shows me my goals, um, my heart rate. So you can see here that around yesterday, around 3 PM, my heart rate was a little too high. So I can go and find out why that is. And then time I went to bed, time I woke up and things like that. So it's a great tool. And if you use it properly, it can, you know, the data that you're getting from here is also connecting to your health data on your um, iPhone. It's merging with the data that I collected from my iWatch. So it's great. It's doing everything I need to do. And I absolutely love it. Uh, another thing that I really, really like, and I've actually personally been using this for, gosh, at least over five years. It's, it's a tool that I really, really love, and it is called the Muse. It looks like this. This is actually, you can see the name there. This is actually a, a Canadian tech company that brought these things out a couple years ago, and I think I have the uh, version three of the device, and I've gone through version one and two, and that's how much I like it. And what this is, what this is, is a meditation headband. And what that means is you meditate with this on. It's very easy. You just, you charge it, you turn it on, and you put it on your head. And you have to make sure that it's right there in the middle and that the, um, the sensors on the side are touching as well. And you just turn it on, put it on. Then, of course, it has a handy app, and it's also called the Muse app. So here I have my Muse app, and I can just go to the section that says meditate. And if I go into meditate, it's going to ask me what kind of meditations I want to do. So you can have guided meditations, you can have uh, there's a huge library of all these different meditations and things that you can do. Um, it gives you a history of all the different meditations that you've done. So it's got lots of data and how many minutes you spent, if you have goals that you've set and things like that. Um, it also tells me um, all my total med meditation minutes, my recoveries, my stats, uh, and there's also muse points, which I'll get to. Um, I'll explain what that is in a second. So one, once you select, um, so there's different types of meditations. So there's like rainforest, a beach, a desert, a city park, ambiance. So there's lo lots of different uh, sections that you can pick. Um, you can select how long you want your session to be. So if I say I want it to be five minutes, then I say, um, it connects it, it syncs it to, to this, and then the meditation will start. So how the meditation works is actually the, the cool part with this device, and I absolutely love it. So if I selected the beach, for example, oh, sorry, when you put this on, you also have to have headphones to your, to your phone. So you put your headphones on and you select beach and you say start meditation and it starts the meditation. So when, when the meditation starts, you hear a beach. And what you hear at the beach usually are waves of the ocean. Um, and you close your eyes and you sort of start the meditation. And what you have to do is focus on your breathing in and out. And you hear the ocean and the beach going. And, you know, it's just very relaxing. But how the band works is it tracks your brain waves so that if you stop focusing on your breath, breathing in and out, the beach sounds that you hear, which is usually nice waves coming in, they start 
becoming large waves and starts becoming turning into a storm if you stop losing focus. So if I'm in going through my meditation and I'm breathing in and out and all of a sudden I start thinking about, oh, I have an assignment for work and I didn't finish it. My brain starts scattering. It's no longer meditating. So in my ears, what I hear is a storm brewing and it starts. And what you have to do is with your brain and your thoughts and meditating, you have to focus back on your breathing in and out. And you with your brain have to calm the storm. And it's actually really cool when you do it because you you hear the storm sort of, you know, calming down, but then you lose your focus again and it starts back up. And sometimes it can be challenging. I have like these when I first started, I could never calm a storm. It was it was crazy. Uh, but now I've gotten really good at it where if I lose my focus, I can totally calm the storm down and I bring the beach back to the state that it was when I started, which is really cool. But then in addition to that, if you reach a really calm state, you start hearing birds going off. And it's actually really cool because the beach almost goes really, really, really quiet. And then you just hear these birds in the background and you know that your, your, med your meditation is working and that you're concentrating and you're relaxed and your breathing is done right. And the, the great thing about this device is that um, it has, you know, regular meditation. Uh, if you know what you're doing and you don't need it to be guided, you can just turn on your beach and go. But if you want, you can also do guided meditation where you have someone talking and they're sort of guiding you through. And then they have different types of meditation, which is um, there's one that's just for the heart. And I actually personally love that one because when you when you do the heart one, it starts and it's sort of like it's it's reading your your heartbeat, and your heart rate. And you can hear your own heart rate and you're, you're meditating. But when your heart rate, if you start thinking about something else or you're not breathing right, your heart rate actually can accelerate. So I've realized that when you breathe slower, your heart actually slows down. And when your heart slows down, you also start hearing those birds because that's the state that your heart should be in. So um, a combination of different types of, me of meditation. And um, there's also a, a breathing one. And when you do all of these meditations, it sort of helps guide you to do the main one, which is what I call the beach. And there's like a rainforest and a desert, lots of different ones. I, I, I'm talking about the beach because I personally love that one. Um, but yeah, it sort of trains your mind to properly do meditation. And um, I know a lot of people will probably be like, oh, really, do you need one of these devices? I did not know how to meditate. And I would go to meditation classes and people would be like in this state of meditation and they would all look so cool. And I would just be with my eyes open looking around like, how, how are people doing this? I just I just didn't get it. It was really hard for me to do because my brain is always going. I'm always thinking. Um, that's why, you know, I track my sleep because when I go to bed, my brain is not shut off. I have to sort of train my brain to to get to a sleep state. So and, you know, sleep is very important, as I mentioned. So this little guy right here, you can also use it, you know, before you go to bed, you can do a sleep meditation where it helps you sort of shut your brain off and start calming down um, and things like that. So I absolutely love this device. I I personally don't know where the company is at with this now. They probably have like a newer model. I know I have this one and it works, um, but great little device if you really want to get into meditation. And again, you don't need to do like half an hour of meditation. Sometimes I just do five minutes, but it really helps you do it right if you feel like you don't know what you're doing. So the Muse, love it. One of my favorite tools, one of my one of my first um, tech health gadgets, I would say. Uh, the next one, okay. Oh, actually I'm lying, that wasn't my first. This guy was my first and you're probably gonna think I'm crazy. So what is this? This is a smart scale and this one is by, it's called One by One. And I actually just picked this guy up on Amazon for 49 bucks or 50 bucks, something like that. And do I really need one of these in my life? Yes, I do everyone should have one of these in their life. Am I a little crazy with my devices? Maybe, but this guy's really good and I'll show you why. So this is the scale. And when you stand on it, your feet have to stand here and here. So you stand on it, we 
your right foot here, your left foot is here. And what you do is it obviously tells you what your weight is, but it's a smart scale. So what else does it tell you? I'm going to let you know right now because I actually really like that one. So again, it's an app. I have like all my health apps in, in one folder. So this one here, okay, I'm 124 pounds. This was like a couple of days ago. <laughs> and you can see that my goal is to lose four pounds. So I have that there. And so it tells me all of this information. So it tells me my weight. And if I go into my weight, it also tells me if my weight is low, normal, or is exceeded. So you can see here that it's, oh, my light. Let me see. Let me, okay. So you can see that it's telling me that I'm normal, but I'm almost like on the high. So when you set this up, it asks you for your age, your height, and it sort of does the measurements based on, you know, your, your average weight and your average height and what you should be based on that. So I'm 5'2", I'm kind of short. So um, it's telling me that I'm, I'm a little bit exceeding, not that I'm like overweight or anything, but I should sort of watch that. And I really like that. And then it also gives me my BMI index where it shows whether it's low, normal, high, or exceeded. And mine is normal, which is fantastic. This is the guy I don't like, the body fat. So it's telling me that it's 35.4%. Usually I'm at 33, 34. Right now I'm a little high and it's actually showing that I'm high. I already knew that because I use this on a regular basis and usually I'm, I'm on the lower side and today I'm on the high, which makes me very unhappy. Um, but, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm overweight again, but for my height, yes, I have a little bit more body fat than I should. So I know now that this is something that I need to work on um, is body fat. But then it also has my body water. So for water, I'm normal, but I'm more on the lower side, which means that I need to drink more water. Then we also have bone mass. And thankfully, my bone mass is good. And then we also have, uh, you know, risk of fat. Mine is normal. Uh, we have BMR. So low or or, or normal, mine is a little low. So, you know, these are all things that you can keep an eye out uh, that you would not normally have access to if you were just weighting yourself on a regular scale. And that's why I really like it. One of the things that I really, really look for here as well, and I really like it, is actually the protein. Um, I was a vegan for five years and I actually had to stop being vegan because as a vegan, I was an unhealthy vegan because I was not eating enough protein in my body. And since I've stopped being a vegan and started eating meat again, it is something that I have really struggled with because my diet, I wasn't used to eating meat and I'm sort of, I sort of, I'm forcing myself to eat meat again. So my protein intake is still not enough for my body. So my body's still in that recovery process. So you can see here that my protein levels are pretty low not even it's not even normal so i have to work on that and that's you know the work i have to do and then it gives you things like your lean body mass uh you know my total body score is almost excellent that's good that makes me happy <laughs> um but yeah it's just such a great tool because again it gives you access to information that i didn't have on a regular scale and these are you know, these are not things that I knew anything about. I don't go on the internet and Google, you know, how, what's the percentage in protein and, you know, body fat for my, my, my body type and weight, what should it be? I, I, I don't do that research, but having access to these tools has taught me a lot because the information's there, it's accessible to me. I'm looking at it now on a regular basis and I'm watching it and I'm being careful with it and I'm being conscious and I, I'm checking it on a regular basis, which leads to the whole preventative health thing. If I'm checking it on a regular basis and I see that something's off, I'm going to look for a way to get it back on track. You know, my protein levels are, are low. What are the things that I need to do to get it back up on in, in a healthy way. So it, it's, it's just the access to the information that allows you to make healthier choices and, 
at Menusano, that's what we're all about, making healthier choices, providing information that will help people make healthier choices and live healthier lifestyles. So, of course, I love my handy tools. So that is my smart scale. If you don't have one, pick one up. They sell them pretty much anywhere or, or you can just order one on Amazon, which is the easiest thing in the world to do. Okay, my next one. Okay, this one's new and I just recently found out about it. And of course I had to try it out. And again, we are not sponsored by any of these things here. These are just my personal favorite. So this company is called, I'm, I, I hope I'm not gonna butcher the name, Vivo, Vivo, I think it's Vivo. And Vivo is a wellness tracker. Again, there is an app, an app that goes with it, which I'm gonna show you in a second. But once you download the Vivo app, it will uh, guide you to order strips. And how this, how this technology works is you order these strips and they come in this package. And I'm going to open it up. And I ordered a package that came with five strips. So these are the strips here. And I'm going to open it up so you can see. And this is what the strip looks like. So what do you do with this? You pee on a stick. That's, that's technically what it is. This is the stick and you pee on it. Once you pee on it, you let it sit for a couple minutes and then you open up the app, the Vivo app, and it's going to ask you to scan the strip once, it's bit, once you've let it sit with your urine for a little bit and you're gonna scan it. Once you scan it, the app is going to give you information. Again, access to information that I never knew existed. I never knew I could get myself. And this, this company, like, it's genius. And I know there's a couple more out there um, that are similar to, to Vivo. I just personally use this one um, because I believe in in their in, in their uh, company uh, message and what they're doing. But I believe that there's a couple other ones out there where you can order strips and see the results on an app too. I just personally like this one because it's not just about results. They also give you all kinds of information, which I'm going to go through. I'm going to take a little longer to explain this one because it's actually really good. So uh, you download the app, you pee on a stick, <laughs> you scan your stick, and then you get access to all of this information. So I'm going to show you. So I do this, the strip once a month. So I'm going to show you my 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 previous reading uh, because I had some stuff that I needed to work on. So I'll be able to show you a little bit more data. So you can see here, it says that my um, overall wellness is 8.4. Okay, that's not bad. I mean, I'm a go getter. I want to be a 10, but I'm not there quite quite yet. So let's see why I'm an 8.4. Okay, so here is the urine data that you get. So it gives you access to water and in water on the six out of 10 for uh, dehydration. So six out of 10 is not bad, uh, but I am a bit dehydrated. So obviously this is telling me that I need to focus on drinking more water. Great. Now I'm going to do that. Now, if I wanted to know more about that, I can go in, but then I have, I also have here my pH balances, which is really important and something that I never really look at. So turns out that my pH balances are 10 out of 10. So I'm doing pretty good there. And I was pretty excited about that. Then I go down and it tells me that ketone is two. And I'm like, what's ketone? I have no idea. So let's go find out what it is. So when you go into ketone, it's telling me that I'm weak. And that's that's not good. I do not like to see that. So why am I weak and what's ketones? I don't know. So it's telling you, it's it's telling me um, having ketones in the urine indicates that the body can't get enough glucose to use as energy, as an energy source, so it begins to burn ketones. Okay, that's very interesting. I had no idea what that meant. So if you keep scrolling down, it starts giving you more information. So uh, a high amount of ketones was detected in my tests, and this increases the risk of keto acidosis. I'm not sure what that is. I will figure that out. 
a, a lower metabolism, which is something that I've actually noticed, but I didn't realize it was due to this. I know my meta my metabolism has changed a little bit, but now I'm, I'm like, oh, this is probably part of the reason why. And it also tells me that uh, it affects me in, um, it, it decreases your daily energy. And I haven't been feeling as energetic as I usually do. Again, this is a result of it. So then it goes and it tells me, improve your results. So what can I do to improve my results so that the next time I pee on a stick, my results will be better? So it's telling me, and this is like, I feel like this app knows me. It's like, it's saying, don't skip on meals. We can see you've skipped meals. Yeah, they, I have. They totally know me. Um, your body is producing ketones for energy. Regulate regulate blood sugar with muesli and skim milk. So what the heck is muesli? I, I had no idea. So it's this really kind of like not so great cereal that's actually really good for you and helps uh, bring up your ketones. So I've been eating muesli with um, not skin milk. They say skin milk, but I've been uh, having it with um, almond milk because I don't like regular milk. And I've been doing it every day so that the next time I test, I'm going to see if what they suggested actually makes a difference in my tests. But it's very interesting to me to, to know that, um, you know, not having enough ketones in my body is affecting my metabolism. It's, it's affecting my, my energy. And, you know, there could be other risks that I don't know about. And then I love that it gives me a suggestion on what I can do to improve this one thing. If I keep going down, they also offer a, um, uh, a, a a service that you can actually order um, vitamins that are uh, specific to your needs based on these tests, and they will send them to you so you can do it. So you can take these vitamins daily. I don't do that. I personally love the suggestions. And um, I take enough vitamins as it is, I want to see if I can improve these results with good diet. So that's the ketones. And you know, great to know. So that's one thing that I've been working on in the past uh, almost month. Then the other thing that they show you is your nitrite. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but I'm nine out of 10, which is fantastic. But you know, what is it? It says some types of harmful bacteria in the urine tract can turn nit nitrates into nitrites. Keeping an eye on the level of nitrites in your urine is a good way to track your health of your urine tract. So great. Good to know. I'm nine out of 10. Not too bad. And then I love this one. It shows you your liver and my liver is moderate. I'm a nine out of 10. That makes me happy. So when I go into it, it tells me your liver performs over 500 vital bodily functions like blood detoxification. De de detoxi detoxification, uh, blood clothing regulations, bile production, and nutrient absorption. So, you know, liver is something that should, you want to be healthy and you want to be in a good state, but, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, how do you know if your liver is healthy or if it's not healthy, right? And then now having access to this information, I think is super important and, and vital to, to just again, preventative and making sure that you're healthy. And honestly, it doesn't, it doesn't kill you to just track it. And maybe I'm a little obsessive. I do love my tools, but just having access to this information and reading it, it takes like two seconds to read this. It's just, it's just sort of like really changed how I feel about health. So let's keep going. It also shows me my magnesium levels and mine are good. I'm 10 out of 10. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, my calcium, which is something that's really important. And I'm also 10 out of 10 there. My vitamin C, I'm 10 out of 10. Yay, that's good. And then it also shows me my oxidative stress and I'm five out of 10. Somehow I'm not surprised because I know I'm usually stressed out, but five out of 10, I'm halfway there. That's not great. Great. So, but I don't also don't know what that means. So when I go into it, it tells me my oxidative stress is uh, is an imbalance in free radicals and ox oxidants. 
uh, if controlled, it if uncontrolled, sorry, its damage to the body cells could lead to many chronic conditions. What? I had no idea. So mine is weak. And that kind of stresses me out. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what the heck? How, how, what, why am I a five? And how do, how do I fix this? Right? Because now I'm stressing out over this. So it tells me about my results. And the results say a positive MDA level uh, is, is indicates the potential of oxidative damage and increases long-term risk of depression accelerated aging and inflammation. Okay. I do not want or need accelerated aging in my life. So I clearly need to figure out what I need to do to fix this. And it's actually giving me advice on what I can do. So it's telling me uh, your body says you need to eat more antioxidant rich foods. Listen to your body and add walnuts, pecans, and and chestnuts or other tree nuts to your salad and smoothies. So what I've been doing, I actually bought this big box of walnuts and I bought little bags at the dollar store and I put like a handful in each little bag and I always have some at the office if I'm at home and every day I make sure that I'm eating one of those bags of walnuts. So at the end of the month when I pee on a stick, I'm going to see if the advice that they gave me actually made a difference because now I'm a little bit stressed out about this and I want to obviously make the improvements. So that's the, that the oxidant stress. Then it's also tells you your salathine levels, which is like your salt and mine is 10 out of 10, which is good. Then it gives you, you know, also your activity, your body data, um, uh, so how many calories you've burned, your steps, and that's just collecting data from other apps that you have on the phone. It also tells you your sleep. So it's actually telling me that my sleep is sleep quality was 24% and I slept for about seven hours and 52 minutes, but it's telling me that my sleep quality is poor. Also takes the heart rate that you get from the aura ring and puts it in here so you can have all that data available. So to do a test, like I was saying, it's very easy. You just see here the plus button. You just say, do the test, and then it guides you on the strip. And then you just pee on the stick, scan it, and then you get access to all of this wonderful information. There is an advice section here, uh, you know, about your different different things. So this one here is telling you about the kidneys, um, my my free radical to eat nuts, my dehydration, um, you know, just foods I can eat, and you know, telling me a little bit about omegas and uh, protein versus cereal, like just so much information. And what I love about it is that like I don't have to spend an hour reading or teaching myself or, you know, I, it's just, it's just like, it's very short little things, but so valuable. And I get so much out of it and I feel healthier as a result. I mean, okay. Some of my results here were a little weak, but some were good too. Uh, but I'm working on it. And it's something that I, I really love because it gives me access to the information. I learn really quickly because it's sh short little things. And I love the challenge of try this to fix this without medication. I don't want to have to take medication to fix everything. I believe that, you know, you are what you eat and that, you know, a lot of things that are going wrong with our body can be fixed through diet, good foods, good fats, things like that. So one of my favorite, favorite, favorite apps, tools right now, I absolutely love this. Everyone that's in my life, I've told them about it. And I'm like, you got to try it, you know, just to see your results and, and see where you're at. And um, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going to continue using it. And I'm going to see how my results fluctuate. And I love trying the advice that they gave me. So great, great app. I'm on it every day. So my uh, next tool is called Air Things. Yes. Yes. What is this? Okay. 
Yeah, I know. Everyone's going to think I'm crazy. <laughs> Ear things. So I bought this also on Amazon, but you can also get it, <coughs> sorry, on their uh, website. It's called Air Things. That's it. And what this is, is an air quality monitor. <coughs> and what this does is it looks for indoor air quality and it will tell you <coughs> if there is mold risk or what is the temperature, the humidity, uh, and if there's any airborne uh, chemicals. <coughs> Again, it's an app that syncs to, sorry, it's a device that syncs to an app. And um, once it syncs, you will get the results. So I have here my AirThings app. And when I go into it, that's what it looks like. And you can see that it's syncing. When it syncs, it basically just tells me an average of what is the temperature. So I usually keep this in my bedroom because I know that I'm going to spend at least seven to eight hours um, a night there. And I want to sort of track the air quality while I'm sleeping. And so it tracks the temperature and it, you know, there is a certain temperature that you should have your bedroom at when you're sleeping if you want to get good quality of sleep. So this will sort of tell you the temperature and that way you can regulate it. It will also tell you if there's too much moisture in the air. When you have too much moisture in the air, you, it can cause mold. So it'll tell you um, a percentage. And if you're at, at risk of getting mold, which is something that's really important to keep track of. And then the humidity, which is also important. But the most important thing why I love this and why I got it is for the airborne chemicals. And you know what's interesting? Since I've had this, um, it shows you a chart of when airborne uh, chemicals is high. And I've noticed that when I put on when I put on a candle, my airborne chemicals go up. That's something I didn't know. And I started doing a little bit of research. And, you know, candles is actually not the best thing to burn and have at home. And I burn candles all the time. I just I love them. I like the smell I want I want my place to smell really good. So I'm like, Oh, I'm gonna put on a candle not the best thing because it actually has a lot of airborne chemicals and so this thing starts going it actually starts turning yellow to tell me that my air is not clean it might be at risk of something for me to sort of like do the things that I need to do so when you're when your air when you're at risk of having airborne chemicals they say open a window clear out the bedroom or clear out whatever room this device is on get get it cleaned up I've also noticed when I cook, um, this thing goes a little bit higher. The airborne goes higher. Um, if I'm burning incense, which is something I, I like to do every once in a while, not, not great for the air. And just like little things that when I'm doing my hair and I have hairspray and I'm spraying stuff on my face and I have like a lot of creams and stuff open, this thing actually goes a little bit higher than it, it, it normally is. So um, you know, it really has educated me on what my air quality is in my home, in my bedroom. And I like to keep an eye on it just so I know what I'm at risk. I mean, when the air, when something is at, at risk on the app, it'll tell you what's at risk and, you know, what you, what you should be careful with, you know, what are, what are some of the causes that it can, it can have on you. So great little tool again. 100 bucks on Amazon. I think I got like the mini, but they have like different versions of it. Um, I actually got this because my AVAC system had a problem. And I noticed that my um, by my air vents, my walls were turning a little bit black. And I didn't realize I had an issue. Uh, and so they came in to fix it. But then I was like, if my walls are a little bit black because of this problem with my HVAC, like, have I been breathing something in? And that's what caused me to actually get this. And I remember when my HVAC system was getting fixed, this thing was going on and it was like off the charts, which was telling me that my air was unclean and I was breathing in all of this stuff that was coming out of my 
um, HVAC system, which meant for a couple of days, I had to have my windows open. I was airing out my system. Plus they cleaned up out my HVAC, which made all the stuff come out. But this thing was a lifesaver because I had no idea. And then I don't, I only have one. So every once in a while, I'll, I'll move it around the house. I'll put it in my kitchen. I love putting it in the bathroom to check and make sure that there's no, no mold growing anywhere. Cause that's the area where I have like a lot of steam, a lot of water. And those are things that you need to look for. So wonderful little device, another one of my favorites and I use it. It's always on. I'm always singing it. I'm always looking at the data. And again, it's about health, right? If your air is not clean and you're breathing in toxins, what is that going to do to your body? Peeing on a stick might help me and tell me. <laughs> um, another, okay, I'm coming to my last one, and which is perfect because I think I'm on time. I might have gone a little over. It's not a device or a physical thing, but it's actually a website. And it is called My Care Compass by Life Labs. And it is a blood results viewer. So usually, traditionally, if you go get your blood work done, you have to wait for your doctor to call you if there's something wrong. If there isn't anything wrong, they don't call you. And then if there's something wrong, you sort of panic a little bit and you make an appointment to go in and see your doctor. So what this website does is um, you book your appointment through Life Labs and they will actually show you your results on this website. And I really like it because um, one of the things that I'm always monitoring, I have a history of, of thyroid in my family, like all my family members have thyroid issues. So it's something that I have to, you know, regulate, uh, regularly uh, watch for. So when I started using this website, I started noticing something and it was that a lot of the results were either you know, borderline or they were okay. You know, the ones that were not okay, I knew they weren't okay. And my doctor, I would see my doctor about it. But one of the things I, that I watch for, like I said, is my thyroid. And my doctor has never told me that I have thyroid issues, but I've noticed now in a couple of the results, my thyroid is like right at the border. So I went to my doctor and I said, you know, I've noticed now that my thyroid is not, it's not good. It's not great. It's like, it's almost in the red. So why aren't we doing anything about that? And they're like, well, it's not in the red. So I'm like, so it's kind of like my body's kind of like a car. If there's a little bit of rust and it's not causing any harm, we're not going to do anything about it. We're going to wait until the rust turns into a hole and there's a leak and then we're going to try to patch that leak, right? So I'm like, I don't think that's the right way to go about it. So in talking to my doctor, I'm like, no, I want to do something about it now. I want to get that, you know, borderline to an okay. I'm not going to wait until it goes over the red line and now I have to fix it versus I know where it's at and I want to do something about it now so that I don't have to have a health problem due to this in the future. So having access to that information allowed me to make decisions for my body and my health and have a conversation with my doctor about it. Obviously, you know, you need to have a good relationship with your doctor and you need to have those conversations. And I'm not a doctor by any means, but the information, the data is clear. It's not lying to me. It's telling me I'm borderline. So I, you know, as a human being, I'm like, why am I going to wait for it to get worse? And I would never have known that if I didn't have access to, to this website um, and actual access to read my data. Again, not a doctor. I don't know how to read all the data, but I know when something is says good, bad, weak, great, right? Just like, just like the, the Vivo app, right? So I'm sort of able to make better decisions for my health based on getting that information. And that's what the theme of today is. It's about, you know, using all of these technology uh, tools to have more control over your health, to, to be able to make decisions that are going to be good for you, not for your doctors, not for anyone else, but for you, um, allowing you to, to have preventative health, uh, 
to, to, to not get sick, to not have to pass that line where you're now in the red and you're now having to take pharmaceutical drugs to fix a problem versus you had access to the data, this information, and you were able to do something about it before it got really bad. That's what all these tools really do for me. And that's why I love them. And I mean, I love technology. I like disruptive technology. You know, there's lots of technology out there and not all technology is good for the world. But things like this are really effective. They serve a purpose. And if you use them right and you really you use them right and you use them consistently, they can really help you live a healthier lifestyle. And that's what this was all about. I hope you enjoyed all of my wonderful tools. And um, again, thank you for joining me. Uh, this is a show that's brought on by Menusano, which is a nutrition analysis software. You can check us out um, at www.menusano.com. And we will see you next time. Thank you.